So the last time we were here, we began our look at probability trees, which is just another way of being able to organize your thoughts about probability. When you have probabilities where there are more than one thing going on, right? So like you win a game, lose a game, that kind of thing. You can be able to tell the, the probability of an event by reading along the branches. And remember that you always need to start then you have your first event, your second event, third event if you have one. Then it branches off from there. They don't always branch because if you get what you need, then you don't need to branch anymore, right? And the probabilities, that was 0.6. Remember, they always have to add up and down. They always have to add to one, including the secondary branching. And then you do the probability of whatever it is, probability of win-win equals 0.6 times 0.6, which is 0 0.36. Sorry, I forgot to put the zeros in front. Make sure that you're listing all these probabilities at the end, which is probably the most tedious part of it. But if you don't have them all listed, it makes it a lot more difficult for you to go back and then read the probabilities from your tree. Okay? They'll be looking for this part. So do it. All right. Then after that, you're just going to use your probability tree to answer some questions. And most of the time, they are very straightforward. Most of the time. But they can get very tricky. So you have to be careful. 95% of your, of your work is just to figure out what are they asking for. Okay. So some of, those, some of those problems can get a little tricky when you're trying to decide what it is you're looking for, especially, remember when we, we talked about something called conditional probability, where you have two events happening, but one event has to happen before the other one. So the probability of A given B, and if that's the case, remember that once you, if you can find the probability of both, then we need to divide out the probability of the one singular event happening all by itself. Okay? And sometimes it's difficult to know which ones, which pieces to use, and so we'll talk about that if you have some questions about those. Okay? All right. So, let's begin with questions from last time. Remember, we, I assigned you, what did I assign you? Uh, one through seven in the Walker probability book. How did those go? A couple that were a little tricky. Please let that silence mean that you understood it completely and you're fine. and not that you didn't do them. Any of those you want to see? No? Oh, you guys are worrying me then. Okay. All right. Well, remember, we can come back to these if you need to. Right? And we can also um, discuss them if you need some help, one-on-one -on -one help after school. From 3.30 to 6, I'm available. Um, just send me a message, right? And of course, on Monday, we'll be back face-to-face. -face. So we have one more type of uh, probability tree question to look at. These, the one through seven that I gave you, all had the probability tree started, right? So those all had some of the tree that they already began and you just had to complete it. Love number seven, it's fun, huh? Now today what we're gonna do is we're going to look at what happens when they don't have them completed, okay? So, just chosen number nine just as a random one and it also has some 
conditional probability in it, so I thought that might be a good one to do. So again, you've, count, you've drawn enough of those probability trees that you're probably pretty comfortable with the process of drawing the tree, but if not, um, we'll talk about it. So, and they don't give you very much room to work on these pages, but there should be enough room, but if there's not, feel free to use your own paper. I just used my own paper when I did these. It's perfectly fine. Okay. Oops, sorry. Don't want to turn it blue. All right. So Alex is playing Bianca at chess. The first person to win two games will be declared the overall winner. The probability that Alex wins the first game is 0 0.6. Okay. So we've got Alice and Bianca playing chess. And Alex, they're talking about these in terms of Alex, right? So if we're talking about in terms of Alex, remember we need a starting point. And for the first game, Alex can either win or lose. Yeah? And the first person to win two games, so that means we're going to have at least two games. Then so branching off of there, we have win or lose. Branching off of there, we have win or lose. But the only one where they won two games is that one. So the other branches don't have two wins, so that means we know we have to continue it, okay? But not everything is going to branch again. I don't need to branch this one because that's a win. We're done. But from lose, you can get win or lose again. Here, we can get win or lose again. Here, we can get win or lose again. So as long as you're neat, you can usually get it into that section that they've given you there, okay? All right. Now... What we need to do then is put our numbers in. And it says the probability that he wins the first game is 0 0.6. So winning the first game is 0 0.6, which automatically makes that 0 0.4 because remember that they have to add up to be 1. If he won the previous game, then the probability that he wins the next game is 0 0.65. So 0 0.65, which makes this 0 0.35, right? If he lost the previous game, the probability of winning the next game is 0 0.55. So here, we have lost, right? So the probability of win is going to be 0 0.55. So it's just a matter of staying focused and organized. Which, of course, since this has to add up to 1, it's going to give you 0 0.65. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe you should have a teacher that knows how to add. Four or five. Thank you. All right. Now, finishing that off, here he lost. So his probability of winning is less, 0 0.55. So that's 0 0.45 for losing. He won. So that's 0 0.65, which makes that 0 0.35. He lost, which makes the chance of winning 0 0.55. And that, of course, makes the chance of winning 0 0.45. Now, that part, fairly straightforward, but now we have to start putting in all the probabilities. So the first probability is that shortened branch where he won twice. Now, don't be tempted to put two wins. Put win-win, right? Make it as descriptive as you can. And of course, it's just taking this number times this number. And if you multiply those together, you get 0 0.39. Okay. Uh, then the rest of them all have three branches. Probability of win, lose, win, 0. Point. Can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> one, one, five, five. Okay. Then uh, the probability of win, lose, lose, 0 0.0945. Again, I'm just getting these from following the branches and multiplying everything along. Because remember, that's an, it's a win and win and always means to multiply. So as you follow the branches, you're going to multiply them. Okay. Next one is probability of lose, win, win, 0 0.143. Probability of lose, win, lose, 
0 0.077 probability of, oh, okay. Uh, I don't need to do that one or the next one, as a matter of fact. Both of those can go away, the third branch, because he lost twice. And if he lost twice, that means Bianca won, right? So those don't need to go on, go on and continue. Sorry about that, guys. So probability of lose-lose is... 0 0.18 and probability of lose lose okay I already have that okay now what's important all of these have to add to make one so you can always check your probabilities by making sure that they add to be one okay all right so we've got all our branches in there make sure they add up to be one now, let's do the math. Answer the questions, I'm sorry. Okay? So let's look at the questions. Now, again, I'm going to lose my tree because I did that. But calculate the probability that they finish after just two games. Okay? Probability, oops. Probability of only two games. Now, they may write it a little differently in the back of the book, but you need to make sure that you're as specific as possible when you write these in. Okay? doesn't matter who won or lo lost. It's just the probability they played exactly two games. Well, the probability they played exactly two games, we had the probability of win-win and... I'm oh, sorry, not and. Or the probability of lose-lose. Those are the only two branches that gave us exactly two games. So that would be 0 0.39, or means you're adding. And remember, any time you get more than one branch, you're always adding them together. So those two added together will give you a probability of 0 0.57. Do not forget this probability statement part. If you do, everything you do is wrong. So make sure you don't just put this number as your answer. Make sure you do the probability statement, probability of only two games or whatever you're measuring, right? This part, you could do in your calculator, but I would really, and on these say, write that down because it's really easy to get the wrong number in here. Okay? All right. Next, the probability that Alex wins overall. Now, remember, that's any time he wins, which is any time that he has two W's up there. So doing that, well, the first one is th two W's because it was probability of WW. So you got one that was probably a WW, then plus, then the second one was also a win. That was the probability of W lose W, W, okay. Then the next time was the first one we lost the first game, so it's the probability of lose, win, win. Okay? And those are the three branches where he won two games, which means he won the overall, overall contest, right? So we'll just take the probabilities from each of those branches, add them together. So identify the branches. And you can either write it out or you can just put little check marks next to them on your uh, tree, but make sure you do it in pencil so you can erase them because you're gonna check some to answer some more questions later too, okay? And when you add all of those together, you end up with the probability 0 0.6485, okay? So that probability statement leading to that number is your answer. Okay. Now, the next one is your favorite. If he is the overall winner, what is the probability that three games were played? So this is one of those where it's a conditional probability. Okay. So the probability that it was exactly three games 
and that Alex won. Okay? But did Alex win every single time? Did it take three games? No. So what we have to do is we have to divide that by the probability that Alex won. Right? We can't have that information in twice or it's not going to make it's not going to make things work, right? So this is a conditional probability. Okay? And the way you can do it is here's what we're actually measuring. Here's what we're measuring it against. So put this one first, the what the thing we're measuring first, the thing we're measuring it against second, and it's that thing that you're going to divide by. Okay? Kind of gives you a little hint about where your numbers are coming from. So, the probability they played that that uh, he won in three games, there were two of those, two things where he won in two games. So he won it, right? That he won in three games, I'm sorry. He, he did this one and this one in three games, right? So that's 0 0.1155 plus 0 0.143. But we need to divide out the probability that he won because that includes the time that he won in only one game. And conveniently, we already have the probability that he won. It's right above there. All right? So the probability that he won is 0 0.6485. Okay? So all we have to do then is add those two together and then do that division. And for some reason, I didn't do that. So. Zero point one one five five plus zero, one, four, three, enter, divide out, point six, four, eight, five, and it gives you a probability of point three, nine, eight, six. Okay? Now, be careful. Remember that you've got to divide it out and it's got to become a decimal. If you, if you divide it and you get a whole number, then you know that you've done something wrong, right? Because probability has to be less than one. So if you reverse them or divide by the wrong number, what's going to happen is your probability is not going to be less than one. So this bottom number that you're dividing by is always got to be bigger than the total that you have in the top, okay? So make sure that you end up with a decimal at the end. Okay, so the probability part really doesn't change. What's changed is that you have to do the probability tree from start to finish. They don't give you any, uh, any template for you to, to write those, but if you did the other seven, then I feel confident that you'll be able to make those work. Okay, all right. So, how did that look? Terrible. Not bad. Okay. So it's not different. Uh, it's just pre presented differently. Okay. All right. So let me stop the recording.